Hey there, Megan Jansen, Employee Wellness Solutions Network. Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Marie-Claude Peltier from Global Watch. Marie-Claude, you've been in this business of helping organizations and believing in the passion of healthy employees for about 20 years. You've been in this industry a long time, so it's a pleasure for me to pick your brain today, specifically mm -hmm. on uh, what you're doing. You're doing some amazing work. Well, thank you, Megan. Yes, I think that there's a lot to do. There's a lot of challenges in that domain, but it's very exciting. There's a, a lot of solutions, too, and, and I think that what you're doing is fantastic, too, Megan. Thank you. It's, uh, it's great to be speaking with like-minded individuals as we continue this conversation in elevating the profile of healthy workplaces. So I want to start off with asking a very preliminary question today is what is Global Watch? Please share what it is. Yeah, well, in fact, Global Watch uh, was launched uh, last year, at the end of last year, so it's quite a new initiative. And uh, the Global Watch is uh, an international platform that we group employers from uh, different countries of the world, and we're looking for best practices coming from all over the world in order to then uh, share them with organizations and you know, affiliates uh, in Global Watch in order to be um, um, uh, to be inspired by best practices that already exist and experimentation from coming from all different organizations from uh, from the world. Wonderful. So it's really looking at the research behind some of these best practices and then bringing forth some of these best practices and seeing some differences and changes among several different countries. Yeah, well, um, we're all looking about, it not, uh, there, there's no country that, that is uh, not facing uh, challenges with health and wellness in the workplace. It, it takes different colors depending on the country because of the public system, health system, because uh, it can depend on, on the different initiatives that the government is, is put in place. But it's, uh, it's always, everyone is looking for having people, uh, you know, productive, well at, at work, at the... Uh, motivated, engaged in the business objective, and to be um, uh, productive most of the time. Marie-Claude, some of the challenges employers are faced when they're wanting to bring health and well-being um, at work, what are some of the challenges you're seeing? Well, um, there's two levels in your, in your question, I guess. Um, there are challenge, uh, business challenges uh, for which health and wellness strategies can definitely be a, a great solution and uh, a strategy that, that needs to be put in place in order to meet those challenges. But it can, vary, it can vary from one organization to another, and it can vary also from one country to another. It can, um, it can be a, a social responsibility for organizations. We know that if uh, we, uh, we are socially responsible as a business organization and we want to create value for in a long-term perspective, we need to take care of health of employees. Uh, it's, uh, it's one of the goals and it's one of the pillars of uh, health and uh, um, wellness when it, when it comes to have a social responsibility, of course, we also see challenges like absenteeism, presenteeism. Uh, we see health costs uh, going up. Uh, it can be medication or it can be with, uh, with uh, uh, health cost uh, services. But it can also be, of course, the loss of productivity, the loss of, uh, of, uh, of well-being that, that, that bring mistakes, uh, uh, errors, um, uh, and a, and a, a social climate in the organization that does not really uh, does not really bring productivity for the organization and well-being for for people. So there's a lot of variation in terms of uh, of motivation for employers to do that. But there's always always one. And if I can just share um, an anecdote, I was uh, this morning at a breakfast, a business breakfast, with um, uh, an, an an association uh, of a board of directors. And there was uh, one of the very well-known uh, director um, uh, who is chair of the board of a large international organization. And we were talking about social responsibility and how it can be linked to HR strategy in the organization. And he says, why we don't, we always see the CEO and the CFO together, but it must be now a triangle. 
you have to see the CIO, the CFO, the CEO, and the, 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 the woman or the man in charge of HR, and so the CR, HR. So we need really to work closely in, the, in H, with a, a really more strategic HR perspective in organization. And he was, uh, he was explaining to us that uh, uh, in his organization, they have a, um, uh, a large uh, um, part of the business that is going on in, in Australia. And he was explaining that there's a lot of problems among their employees regarding uh, violence, but, uh, but uh, marital violence. I don't know if we can say it in English, but we know of spouse and uh, violence with, uh, within spouse. And he said that he, they were very in, um, innovative and they launched uh, a new uh, HR policies that allow people facing those problems to take uh, a sick uh, uh, um, uh, vacation in order to stabilize their personal life and he said at the end imagine the impact on the community that having that policy when you're an important employer in your community how that that can have an impact on your uh, on your community around you so whatever the reason is there's always a good reason to uh, to do health and wellness in the, among employees and organizations but we need to be more strategic about it I love that how you talk about bringing the main people around the table, the same table. So the, the C-suite executives, the, the CFO, the, the human resources, and everybody being on the same page. We know in our industry, in our space, that the more support we have at the top, the better any initiative is really going to be. So yeah. in your opinion, in your perspective, what are some of those challenges employers may face when trying to implement a health and well-being at work initiative? Well, uh, the challenges is that we're not strategic enough. Mm. Uh, we need to really position health and well-being at work in, the, in a business strategy, in, in the business vocabulary, in the business indicators. We need to bring it to the board of directors. We need to bring it at the at the, uh, um, at, the, at the business meetings, at the very top level, because it's, it's only that way that we're going to be able to bring a culture of health and well-being at work. And if we want to have results, even if it's results, socially, social resort, uh, result or business results in terms of uh, the bottom line, uh, in both cases, we're going to have results only if it's uh, taken very seriously from top to bottom and from bottom to up to the top. So with a strategic approach. So that's why I think that the idea of having a CFO and the, C and the CRR, HR people uh, with the CEO is, is, uh, is very, very important. And we need to have, use the same vocabulary, even if it's um, a more uh, HR perspective, you know, it's, uh, sometimes it's not really business or numbers or um, ROI, but we need to, to discuss and to use the same vocabulary. That's an excellent point, and how you articulated that was, was really helpful, and, and it really show, goes to show that the importance of being on the same page as a leadership team, and having your employees know about caring, know that it is a valuable um, part of the entire corporate strategic approach, and having that layered in as such is so, so important. Mary Claude, you've been dealing with um, several different countries. So I'm really interested to hear what are some of the differences? Um, I mean, we, we talked about earlier that yes, people are people, the importance for healthy people at work, doesn't matter what country we live in, but have you found there to be differences between maybe some of the countries you've been involved with? Well, um, the, basics, uh, the basic of that is that every country is facing uh, challenges with that. Uh, organizations are not uh, at the same level, though. And uh, it always depends on uh, different ecosystemic um, uh, ser services and solutions that already or not exist. If there's a, a health system that is easily accessible or, or, or uh, present, then uh, it's a one thing. But if the health system is, is there but not really accessible, then employers won't have the choice to offer some uh, medical or uh, um, you know, biometric in the workplace. And it's, and it's seen as a gift for employees to have that in their workforce, in their workplace. 
um, in different countries, it's going to be the government is going to be a, a very involved in, the, in developing tools and numbers and, and convincing employers that they need to invest in that and guide them with tools. So it always depends on the ecosystem of the country. But uh, if we look at uh, uh, the whole perspective, uh, what I see is um, organizations that were more convinced that they need to work on physical health are seeing that they need to work also on psychological health. Mm -hmm. And the opposite is true, is, is true too. So organizations that were um, only working or mostly working on um, a work condition or psychological health, they need also to combine with health preoccupation. So we are seeing, we're starting to see a much more comprehensive and global uh, way of seeing the human at work. And because of the, um, the, uh, the impact of uh, our new way of working with millennials, with the impact of AI on, on, on our new way of working uh, and the different uh, um, you know, uh, 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 management practices, we need to see it as a global perspective. And I, I see that, that it's coming. So uh, organizations are trying to see it in a more a comprehensive way uh, and also a more holistic way of, of working, including now families and, 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 and spouses and, and their community, because it's, uh, it's, it's a shared responsibility uh, among uh, employees, uh, employers, managers, but also the community around. Well said. I think if we have all those supports in place, organizations in any country are, are bound to be successful in their mission for keeping their people or you know helping their people and their families stay healthy. Um, yeah. Marie Claude, as we tie up our discussion today, are there any other thoughts that you'd like to share, insights around Global Watch or and even around some of the different things we alluded to earlier today? Um, well, I think that the most important thing when, when we are looking to do something in our organization in terms of health and well-being at work, um, I really want to put emphasis on the fact that we need to be strategic, we need to be um, uh, integrated and, and uh, well positioned in the business goals and to really mobilize all the different stakeholders inside the organization and outside the organization and 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 we need not to stay alone in our challenge and to mobilize people and so i think that that being said the second goal is to be um to address the problems or the challenges or the opportunity in a step-by-step -step approach uh sometimes it's it's uh, it can be very um uh, large uh, or seeing as a really too, too big challenge. But if we go step by step and we mobilize the different stakeholders around, around us in order to bring the strategy, um, uh, then I think that's going to, be, to generate the best uh, results and also significant but also sustainable results. Awesome. Mary Claude, I've thoroughly enjoyed listening to you. You've uh, so much information and knowledge about this uh, exact topic. So thank you so much for your time today. And I look forward to seeing you sometime very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.